guys, my name's Courtney and I've just picked up this 2007 Maserati Grand Sport for my boss. Uh, he, however, is in Melbourne. I'm in Sydney where the car was purchased. So I'm left with the task of driving it from Sydney to Melbourne, which is roughly a thousand kilometers to his place. Join me along the road. I will talk about the fuel economy, how well the car drives on the road, the gear changes, the flappy paddle gearbox, how well the car responds to highway driving, how well the car responds to the driver. This particular model has the cream leather interior, which uh, I reckon is the best combination, coupled with the silver exterior. It's got 52,000 kilometers on the clock, which is not bad. And uh, it was advertised for $63,000. I managed to squeeze three off the price. So final price of 60,000 Australian dollars. There's so many electrics in this car. You've got your auto mode, which I'm currently using. Red flag for some of you, but my boss, he's not a flappy paddle gear shifter. So I'm testing out the auto, which is amazing. Honestly, it's amazing. You've got your electric starts, your sports mode, your traction control, your electric windows. Everything on this car is electric, which is probably not a great thing. I suppose it leaves the window open for more problems to arise. And when you're talking Maserati, a small electrical fault is not a cheap fix. They say the Grand Sport can be an everyday driver, and I honestly believe it. Until you hit the Sport button, the ride is incredibly smooth. Huge front windscreen, you've got your back windscreen and your rear vision mirror which is big and you can see everything coming up behind you. Your side mirrors are great. The only issue that I've found so far is the blind spot. So when you indicate to change lanes and you do look over your right shoulder, you've got the pillar right here. Actually, you can see it in this shot. One other thing that I've found on the Maserati Grand Sport is ice mode. What that does is it changes gears under 3,000 revs. This is actually a fantastic mode. I think if you want to save some petrol as well. In a city driving, why do you need to RPM all the way up to bloody 8,000? You don't. So, ice mode, great for fuel economy, in my opinion. I'm six foot three. Uh, and, and one thing that I always find, especially in sports cars, is that they are very cramped. Now, this car, the seat goes back quite far, which is fantastic. It sinks into the floor, which is even better. It gives me a little bit more headroom. But the steering wheel not only adjusts up and down, but it comes out. So, for my long arms and my long legs, I can sit back quite far, be quite comfortable, and drive the car perfectly. I have uh, driven about 550 kilometers so far, uh, just over halfway to Melbourne, and the Maserati is going flawlessly. The petrol consumption, I've done probably just over, I've done about two thirds of a tank, I'd say, and of the two thirds since I reset it, I've had 465 kilometers. So it's not too bad. At this pace, I may get 700 k's from the tank. It's not bad from an eight cylinder. Now, like myself, the car will need a little break on such a long road trip, and uh, there's nothing better than some roadside mackers. Okay, now that we've stopped for lunch, it's uh, probably a good time to talk about um, some facts about the car, Maserati. Um, owned by Fiat since 1993. Same car company, Fiat's kind of like the, the mothership that owns uh, Ferrari, uh, Alfa Romeo, Abarth, 
probably more. Um, but this engine comes from the Ferrari. So it's the 4.2 litre V8. Same engine in a Ferrari F430, I believe. Uh, and uh, they, they basically put the Ferrari V8 in this after the original 3.2 litre twin turbo that the 3200 GT had in it. Now, the first version, which was the Maserati 4200, had that first generation of, of Ferrari engine, and they coupled that with the Cambio Corsica gearbox, which is the flappy paddle um, shifter. And it wasn't that great. They made some improvements, and then they released the um, the later model and the, the more sportier Grand Sport, which of course has the, the better looking body kit. Um, and they made some improvements to the gearbox. Now the gearbox massively improved, is what I hear. Now, this is the only one I've ever driven, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. But um, no, I heard it was a massive, massive improvement and it's, it's fairly faultless in my opinion, it's great. Something else that's impressive for any watchers outside of Australia is build your own burger at McDonald's. Check out this bad boy. I'll be doing well not to uh, spill this on the cream leather interior, but look at that. Mm. I'm not sure if this is more impressive than the car itself. That uh, 4.2 litre V8 Ferrari engine puts out 400 horsepower, which propels this thing from 0 to 100 in 4.8 seconds, top speed 290, according to Wikipedia. We don't know how true that is, but it has been recorded that Maserati Grand Sports have gone faster and have done the 0 to 100 in a quicker time. So, it really depends on uh, who the driver is, I suppose. There's no limits. Why don't we test it now? Just waiting for some traffic now and then we can take off. Uh, I've tried to do this a couple of times earlier today, failed, but I've secured you down there. I'm sorry the view's not great, but here we go. Woo, shit, I'm only in fourth gear, and I'm already at 1.30. You fell down again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh my god, that will put a smile on the hardest to please person in the world. Wow. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't know how long that took, but I I saw the needle hit 130 and I was only in fourth. I wasn't even redlining it. I reckon I was pushing it to about 6,000 RPM. I'm, I'm a little scared to push it further. Woo! That is exhilarating! My goodness, you'll never get older than that. And I'll tell you what, that is better than my burger. So, I've officially made it to Melbourne. 11 hours of straight driving in the Maserati. And uh, let me tell you, it has been without hiccup. It has been a magnificent vehicle. Uh, it has been the easiest 11 hour road trip I've ever done and the funnest. Would I buy one? That's the big question. Would I buy one? Yes, I would, 100%. And I now know what I'm gonna save up for because this thing is an absolute machine and it is worth every penny. Second hand, $60,000. What else can you get that gives you this much exhilaration, luxury, power for $60,000?